You know, sometimes we take the word of God just for sometimes granted. Um, the word says, beat your flesh under subjection. And trust me, I'm eating this too. Beat myself under subjection means what God he, he has given me. He said, you have to know and discern when things are not giving me glory and when things are not building you up in faith, when things are not building your brother up in faith, when things are not building your spouse up in faith, when things are not building your children, your family, your community up in faith. By that, and by beating yourself under subjection, beating your flesh under subjection, it's going to come with some things that's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to come with some things that make you a little frustrated because you have to peel off more layers and give up more things. But as you give up more things, trust me, God said, as you give up, I'm going to give to you. Now, he's dealing with me. You know, I, I love, I thank God for my boys, you know. And children are closer to God than we can think they are. Me, personally, I love scary movies. I love the glory movies. I, I cut them up, you know, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. I love, like, a UFC Ultimate Fighting Challenge. And my boys, they can't watch it because it's, it's some content on it that would, it would make them scared. It would give them nightmares. And it would, like, just make them not feel well in the spirit. And then I could be macho and say, hey, suck it up. Become a man. Grow with me. You're going to watch it on watch. But then God said, no, be tenants to their spirit. And then I really look at myself and I'm like, God, I got to give up this. I can't watch that. And he's like, I'm using the babes to cause you to cut away from the things that have grappled you. And I'm like, sometimes I go, I'm grown. I can watch that. Go to your room. And God deals with me to where I can't watch it. Because what is that is saying that I'm able to watch something that don't glorify God, but then I, I sanction you as a child. But when you get older and you want to watch it, I can't say not to because I've done that. And what that is, is sin. Because the eye gates, the ear gates. We have to be careful with, you know, what we allow and learn. Like, I love my wife. And I can't watch. We don't got TV in the bedroom. <laughs> I can't watch the shows I watch because her spirit is so sensitive that she don't allow everything in her spirit. And then she could be asleep and say, baby, I can hear that I'm asleep. I'm like, well, you're not asleep. And then literally it interrupts her sleep. And God, he showed me, you might be man and macho, Anthony, but you have to beat your flesh under subjection. Because certain things, just because you can handle it, don't mean you force it on others to handle it. So I've been giving them things and to literally back up what I'm saying. God gave me the scripture and, and I, I looked it up because I kept hearing my spirit. And I, I knew it sounded familiar, but then it really God said, what, do, what I'm really saying. And by this, I'm really like, I'm speaking not just with the time of the day, but I'm speaking of the time that we're, is coming that we as Christians must begin to stand. By that, it comes with this. Acts 19.15, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Now, it's, this is going to be talking about the, 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 the disciples wanted, they tried to cast out the spirit. A man, he, he, he tried to get to Jesus, he didn't get to Jesus, so then he went to the, he said, well, hey, they walk with Jesus, they know Jesus, let me go to them, because they always with Jesus. So he went to the disciples, and they tried to cast out the spirit, but they could not do it. It's like they literally was in agony their self. That was the indicator that something was missing. You know, what was missing not was I walk with Jesus. What was missing not was I don't pay attention to Jesus. What was missing was I haven't yet tapped in who he really is to me. Jesus, he 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 spoke in prayers, but he tried to people. He said, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? And everyone was like, okay, you just, you're Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But one said, you are the Messiah. He said, you don't know that by reading and studying. Now, I'm paraphrasing. But you know that by revelation of God. That means he seek God for more than what, what this naturally meaning 
I want to walk with Jesus. He seeked him for everything. When we think about the, well, literally when it comes, he said, when Jesus was speaking, he says, hey, he said, let the dead bury the bear. He said, he said, sell all that you have. <laughs> he was saying you have to give up the things of this world because it can hinder you, stop you, plague you, and deny you from seeking God. Now, King James 19, I'm sorry, Acts 19, 15. I'm going to King James Version. It said, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? That spirit, the evil spirit, was speaking to the disciples. They said, hey, we cast you out. And the, and the name, they said, Paul it says to Jesus Christ. And the spirit mocked and laughed because he, he knew they was not confident. But he also mocked and laughed because he knew there was something that they continued to take a covenant with. Whether it be conversation. Whether it be friends, whether it be movies or entertainment, whether it be whatever they were doing in a dark night at an hour when no one was looking, the evil spirit knew they took covenant with him and something in some form. And what he actually began to do, he told them, if you, he was just exposing them, if you keep going, I'm going to have to tell you why you couldn't cast me out. But the thing I love about Jesus, Jesus gave him no, no room and no ground. It says when he literally spoke to the spirit and the spirit came out, it says it, it ran into, it, it's like legions, it ran into, and I want you to see the magnitude and multitude of this, because when the spirit ran into pigs, you know, that, that's why we call them unclean things and shouldn't eat them. But when they ran into them, it says they literally ran and they went to kill themselves. But I, what I want you to see, and that is, there was legions, many, not one. So that means the spirit came and attacked. It didn't attack this person just be, at once. It took years through the things that they took covenant in, the things they came in agreement with that wasn't of God, the things that their family, their friends, whatever their profession was, they took a covenant in something that caused them to get further, further away from God or to get weaker, weaker in God. Now, what I love is like, literally just, I, God said, in, in my obedience, do you really know what I mean? Because I'm gonna tell you, in this day and time, it's no longer okay. It's no longer just to be satisfied with being a Christian. You can't just say I'm a Christian and expect everything to happen because everyone is saying they is Christian. There's two phases to a Christian that God really hit me with last night. He said, look, it's one when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you receive salvation. That's the first step. That's the best step. That's the easy step. But then it says, I need you to recognize this. Learn of me and grow. That's the first step, but that's not where you stay. Salvation ain't, oh, I'm saved. I'm making it to heaven. I'm okay. He said, nope. He said, Jesus said, look, I might go that the comforter might come. Go thee here and wait and tarry for the Holy Spirit. Then you will receive power. That what he was talking about, he was saying, if you wait for this Holy Spirit to fall on you, you're going to receive power. Power to do what? That's the second part of living. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power to basically lay hands on the sick. Basically to cast out devils. Literally, I don't know. It's like I was in a movie. I just start saying things and I'm, I see people acting crazy. And I'm like, man, I, I just want to go lay hands on cast the devil out of them. And I'm like, God, why do I feel that way? And he's like, you're now ruling in the Holy Spirit. You just need to learn how to operate and how to do it. Because it would have seemed crazy if I would have walked up to somebody and said, hey, can I pray for you? That is actually doing demonic warfare and casting out spirits. Focus your prayer that it will cause a change. Literally, yesterday, like I was um at a market. You know, everyone like, oh, the National Guard, we hate them. They're here. This is not, this shouldn't be. And, that, that, that. and I'm like, wait, well, the spirit before that National Guard was clearly Satan. Clearly, everyone got possessed by a devil. No matter if they fell for the okie choke dokie trip and they, they just fell because someone bust the window and now they feel the free to ride and get free things. I'm sorry, that spirit... Free is a spirit. You know, I look, 
I'm, I'm guilty. I can say, hey, if it's free, it's for me. And my wife can say, everything ain't free for you. And then I had to begin to analyze, okay, what does she really mean? Then I had to begin to realize, oh, that's a spirit. I ain't got to take everything because it's free. People get, look, there used to be people that I know that were drug dealers. They would give me clothes, money, sneakers, and basically I did not have to do things, but I had a spirit to run the street. Because I came in a covenant agreement with the things of the world. I'm walking around the sneakers I know was bought with drug money, and I know they wore it, and because I received it, and I didn't pray over it. I didn't say, God, look, change this thing. And I just put it on and wore the clothes that belong to the enemy, the sneakers that belong to the enemy, putting the cologne on the belong to the enemy, that, like, that cologne was used to seduce women. And basically, I found myself, like, walking down the street, I'm married, and, like, people were hitting on me. I'm like, what is going on? I got my ring on. Like, I'm saying I'm married. And God said, you came in covenant with that thing that was unclean, that thing that was unholy. You might be living for God, but the essence of where you got it from is still on the thing that you are presenting. So the spirit sees the attraction of what is already theirs. That happens a lot with us. Our words, our mouth, right now with everything going on, you know, George Floyd getting, you know, killed. Right now, it's a lot of believers are not sounding like believers. And trust me. I'm, I'm being honest. People that I look up to, people that, that I watch and I mirror and I say, man, I, they, they motivate me, they inspire me. But when I've been hearing their mouth late, I'm like, wait, that don't sound like God. Like you're checking the Christians. You're saying the Christians are weak and, and we're not standing up and fighting for, for liberty and justice and injustice of black people. And I, I watch this shift from the kingdom of God to, oh, I'm a black man and we suffer this. this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Jesus is God. God is the Holy Spirit. That's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I never heard God sound like that. And what God showed me and began to download in my spirit is basically this. They was once wounded and they agreed with the enemy. They never got freedom and delivered from it, but instead they got entangled. And then you're hearing their heart. Even though they, they've been serving me and loving me and praising and worshiping me, I am actually doing something in them as I'm doing it in the world. I am actually causing them to become untangled and twined, but I need them to be the prodigal son. Look, the Bible is for believers, not the world. I'm, I'm sorry we stick a Bible in a, a newborn person or we try to stick it in an unsaved person. I tell you, someone stuck it in my hand when I wasn't saved. I threw it down. I put it on the stuff. I looked at someone to give it to. I left it on the bus. I was not reading it because I was unsaved, living in the world. And the last thing I wanted was something's going to tell me to stop sinning and stop enjoying my life as a sinner. I wasn't giving it up. So we had to stop putting the, and I'm not saying stop, but I'm just saying don't put a Bible in an unbeliever hand and just walk away and think they're going to read it. They not. They're going to do it by our life. They're going to do it by our words. They're going to do it by how we are showing ourselves in the world. And it really plagued my heart and I hurt my heart. And I had to intercede, not for just what was happening, not just for the police, not for the National Guard. I found myself interceding at night. And trust me, now I'm, I, I be, it became real to me why Jesus cried and blood dripped out of his eyes. It got to the point like, you are my mentor. And God said, no, it's the hurt that they never healed from and been delivered from that they never received in the healing and asked me to remove it. And now I'm bringing it up so they can see it. I'm bringing it up so it can be exposed. I'm bringing it up so the people of God can come into one of the court and say what I'm saying is from heaven and help them heal, bear their burdens. Do not judge, but bear their burdens because I came for all sinners. We are all dirty, filthy rags. He loved us when we was yet sinners and died for us. God said, I am coming for my obedience. Not what you're feeling, not what is going on in the world, not what CNN and all these media stations are producing. They're producing fear. The reason why they're producing fear, God hit me. He said, if you are fearful of something, you can't love it. If you are fearful of it, you can't have compassion, but you will begin to hate it. 
And God said, I'm dealing and I'm erasing and I'm burning up and starting a fire in the people's heart so the hate might be burned up. So it might become, look, when you when you try gold by fire, the all impurities burn up. And the God said, that's what I'm doing with the people God hearts. I'm using this situation and bless me to God. I, I'm telling you, God, God will deliver. God came for sinners. And one thing I really noticed about George Floyd, and I found this nice picture, and I said, God, this is so this is so prophetic. His, he was dressed up with his daughter in New York, had his daughter on his shoulders. His hat said faith. And then he prophetically said out his mouth and his daughter repeated, daddy's going to change the world. I said, what? I said, God, wait a minute. He literally stated, daddy's going to change the world. We never knew who he was before that day. We never knew he exists before that day. And truth be the honest, if there was not a camera, you wouldn't have known he, who he got killed. There wouldn't be a witness to say he was innocent. But literally, he gave a prophetic word because even though in his sin, he still wanted to change lives. You cannot want to change lives and love God and the Holy Spirit in you is calling you to a higher level to become holy. Holy and live for God. I'm telling you, God is moving, so we got to realize we can't just say we're Christian no more. We have now, we have to want to be the remnant of God. We have to now want the world to see God here on earth. By that, we have to be ready to live for God and die for God. We have to be ready to and willing to seem crazy, to seem embarrassed, to seem like we don't know what we're doing. We got to be willing to sound foolish because the world would not understand God. By that, it's gonna it's gonna challenge you. The world is opening up. We, we're gonna go back to work one day. I don't know what I don't know when. We're gonna go back to the church building one day. I don't know when. We're gonna go back to the well, we already in the market, but right now in the market, you should be looking different. You should be looking like the remnant of God. But it's going to come back to the time. Look, I I miss going to the mall. Now I'm, I know I, when I go back to the mall, Lord, I'm going to have to like have tracks in my pocket like crazy. I'm going to have to have some oil on my hand because if I see someone breaking out and crying, I'm going to I'm gonna look at my, my opportunity to witness and tell them about Jesus and I pray for them. And I'm going to anoint my hand. They may not know it, but I'm going to anoint my hand before you and I'm going to pray. If I look, I'm not, I'm not trying to beat people down, but I know this much, and I might be the pray for me. I'm gonna try to have some bell money saved up. I'm not trying to, not trying to be crooked. But one thing I have in me, I hate when I see a man hit a woman in public, period. But you do it in public. My wife, some she a lot had to pray for me for the Holy Spirit to come back on me. And, and God, He's saying, I want you to be mad at injustice. But remember you to remnant and deal with it. Because I even love that soul that is hurt, that is broken, and trying to break another. But I need you now, son, to begin to understand who I am. So in that process, I want you to realize this. God is loving all. God is loving all no matter who you are, no matter what it is, no matter what situation love. God came and got me when I was in my dirtiest issues. God came and gave me. I, I got numerous times when I lied and said, this time, God, he did it. I went back into the world. God, this time, he, he, he came in a bar. God, you do it this time, he came in prison. God, you do it this time, he came in court. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's still the same thing that is happening today. And I, even though I am, um, my flesh get mad about the looting and rioting because I can't go shopping where I want to shop. or I can't do the things I want to do, take a nice walk in the cool park at night with my family. God says, but don't be mad. And I get angry. I, I'm, I, I put the devil on the spot. I do get angry sometimes. I got to repent. Be angry and sin not. But I want to jump into this quick thing that I want God, he put in my heart. Position yourself. Act. Position yourself and get in acts of worship and live holy life that is sacrificed to God. That means we got to actually do these things daily. No more I, I fell for the ogie dogo. No more I got mad. No more I, I just... I just couldn't take it no more and I had to explode. No more I just 
tore my brother down or my sister down. No more I just was angry and I just snapped on my, my spouse because she's my spouse and I, I, I just needed an outlet and she my, she my wife and she can help cover me or that's my husband. I can snap on him when I want to. And God is like, no, no, no. I said present yourself holy, a living sacrifice daily. Trust me, I got kids. I'm, yesterday, they, it was, I don't know, they want to be around me now. COVID-19 is over. They wasn't around me. Now, they want to be around me. And they want to just sit here after work and just sit here. And it, yesterday, they broke out in a little argument. I thought it was going to turn into a fight. And I'm just looking like, ooh, I'm about to snap and discipline, y'all. And God said, no, have patience. I thank God for my wife. She put on prayer music. And he said, just let the music work. And they went from arguing. <laughs> to peace, to loving, hugging each other, having fun. And I'm like, okay, Lord, because the tension from what happened in the world and me boiling and them fighting, it made me look and really take anger. Like, y'all are black, about to fight, y'all sisters. And God said, that's, that's not what I want to hear. I want to hear my presence, man, release. But when we believe God, we will trust God and we will prove God's how much we love him by what comes out of our mouth. We will prove how much we love God by our obedience to not speak what the world is speaking. We would uh, uh, show God that we love him, that even when we are afflicted, we will not curse for love. We will speak life and not death. God is calling for us to be his remnant like never before because the word Christian has been taint and watered down because People that say they are Christians have negotiated or they have watered down the word or watered down what Christ really came to do. So when you say you're a Christian, the world now looks at you like, yeah, I don't want to be a Christian. They're not really denying Christ. They're denying the person and the lives of those who said they was Christians, but they did not live a holy sacrifice that was good to God. And the world knew it. That's why they judged it. That's why they was straight away from coming to church. And look, I don't know. Church may return back to a building, but I, it would never be normal again. It would never be the same again. I know I have found myself praying for more people on Facebook and on the street than I really, I'm saying sinners, than I really have seen come to the church in a whole year. I, I Look, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm tired of looking. I'm not talking about my church, but I'm tired of saying 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 faces every week. And I'm like, where's the, where's the new person? Where's the sinner flooding in the door? Like, you ain't bring nobody this week? You ain't bring no neighbor? Nobody from your job? And God is like, literally, he gets a little upset and we wax cold. Or we become lukewarm. When we're not on fire making sure that someone new is coming or someone new is hearing the word of God of our mouth, that someone is becoming a believer by the words of our mouth, then God is saying you need to check your temperature because you're either waxing cold or you're becoming lukewarm. Literally. That's, that's literally what happened to Adam when, when he ate the, the forbidden, when he ate from the forbidden. He literally didn't start dying. If we're not winning souls daily, we have to check our own thermometer, temperature, and thermostat and say, wait a minute. I want to be like I was when I first came to Jesus. I want to go back to my first work when I was on fire. You know, I, look, it was contagious when I first got saved. I, I Look, I went about praying on everything. Cats, dogs, anointing walls. Look, I want to love my friends. I, I used to be on the corner. I, let me tell you about Jesus. They're like, yo, you're killing the grove. Dude, get away from me. We can't get high with you no more. We, no, we're not even smoking weed with you no more. We're not drinking with you. Don't come to the board no more. You messes it up. And God said, that's how you knew you was changed. When you could show up and interrupt sinners, when you could show up in the world and say you change and you look different, you sound different, when you can show up and you're just showing up to tell someone about Jesus, that's when you know you become the remnant because it's no more you but God. But when we begin to hear what heaven is saying and then we act and we demonstrate and illustrate it to the world, people should be saying, I know you're a Christian. I know you're a believer. 
It's something different about you. You, you, you and your family, y'all totally different. Y'all not even of your, this environment. Y'all not of the community. It's just something different about y'all. We as believers should stick out. There should be a fire that is burning, not just not inside of us, but there should be a fire. Look, the comic books and the movies, they pick fun of it. There should be a fire burning on top of your head. They should see, wait a minute. It's wisdom and knowledge coming out of that mouth. It's wisdom and knowledge coming out of that family. They're ignoring it. They're different. They're not, they not like this environment. But literally, that's when we begin to motivate others to change and have a different life. You know, I, I love it. Like, when it get hot, I get popsicles. I get chips for the whole block. Because, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing them on the little kids on my block, especially the ones that I know ain't going to church. And I'm just telling them about Jesus. But I'm not stuffing it down their throat. I'm giving them a snack and talking to them and just having fellowship. I'm, I'm teaching them how to cut weeds and bushes. And I'm talking to them and trying to teach them life skills. But at the same time, giving them hope for a future, a hope for tomorrow. To where no matter what they return to, they always know, guess what? That man down the street, he he, he just be nice to us. And all he does is talk about Jesus. And I'm, I'm being a fisherman among us souls. These kids will grow up to become men. These, these young girls will grow up to become young ladies. Some, look, don't take age. There are grown men that are still kids and grown ladies that are still kids that are looking for that figure that would speak life so they can come out of that broken, abused, and abandoned childhood state and mature and grow and start becoming a productive adults. And when we love them to Christ, we actually love them back to life. They say jail is the worst prison. It's, look, jail is not the worst prison. I can tell you, I've been there. There's some people in jail that's smart and free. Even though doing life sentences, they smart and they free in their mind. There are people walking around in this world that are free on this street, but stuck in prisons of their mind. We have to begin to be the keys that unlock that cell in their mind and their spirit. We have to begin to be like, you know, Hall and Silas in a prison walking the street. That as we're walking, praying, as we're walking, talking, as we're walking, and God is revealing us things to us, we're speaking into existence, and the jail cell doors are swinging open on people's lives. I don't know about you, but I, I'm believing on God on that fire and that power and authority that as I walk past people, look, my shadow heal. My shadow delivers. Look, God said, guess Jesus said, these things I do, you do greater. He is talking about, will you dare to receive the anointing and the blessings and believe that you can walk like me as a man here on earth? Because I had came from heaven as a spirit. And put God put me in a body, a vessel, that I might walk and show you how to walk. He didn't say... I want you to walk in this unattainable. He said, no, I'm going to make sure it's attainable for you to do this because what I'm going to do is going to leave and send a comforter. You're going to have the Father in you. You're going to have the Son and the Holy Ghost. You're going to have the Trinity residing in you. And all you have to do is every day daily continue to unite the fire inside of you. Continue to fast and pray. Continue to seek God early in the morning. Seek him that you might find him and be filled with the Holy Ghost. God is asking for us to be on fire like never before. I'm telling you, look, I, I, I'm a Christian, but I guess what? Because of my relationship with God, I'm a remnant. I'm not stopping with a Christian. Because the moment I stop at a Christian, I'm saying I have attained. I haven't attained nothing until the day Jesus come back. And guess what? He called his bride's moon. That's when you can say you have made it. You have attained the glory of God. Because I don't want to be sitting here saying I made it. And I give you full God and say I know you're not. Get there away from me. I don't want to say I made it and a rapture come. And I'm still sitting here like, yo, whoa. God, what? I, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. What, what? I do not want to be sitting here thinking I made it until I see God for myself with my own eyes. And I'm in heaven. And he shows me, hey, there's a room in the mansion. There's a mansion right there. Your name on it. Go get it. That's when I'm party. That's when I say, Father, I just want to sit in your presence at your feet. I don't even care about the mansion. I just want to sit. Look. That's what God desires for us. 
we are to be like Jesus, but we will begin to motivate others. Our reward and our obedience will be the fact that we will experience the blessings here on earth. Line yourself up with God. Line yourself up with God. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to share this because it was, um, because I, I know I'm called to multiple to the people, and I'm called not just to the, the saved, but the unsaved. I'm called to the drug addicts. I'm called to the, the drug boys. I'm called anything that's out there that's a sinner, I'm called to it. I'm anointed by God to help get it out of sin and get it delivered. I'm anointed to introduce them to Jesus Christ, their Lord and their Savior, and pray for them that they receive salvation and become new and, and whole in Christ, and they begin on fire. Our mandate as the people of God, is to get the harvest for God, to increase the kingdom of God. That's all we are called to do. The Father's business, he has sent us to gather a multitude of harvests. So we have to be very attentive to our words that come out of our mouths. We have to make sure we're sounding like Jesus, looking like Jesus, acting like Jesus, even on our worst bad day. I want to be like Jesus when he was being whipped. He took it. I don't know about you, but there's things that God let happen to you, let you go through, let you experience. Not because he was mad at you. Not because you, you really disobeyed him. Because he said, no, I want you. Now, hear this. I might, but I don't frighten y'all. But he, I want you to experience it. So, others can see you demonstrate your faith in me. So, others can see you illustrate that you have my spirit, that you will not, that you will love and not hate, that you will stand strong and steadfast and not give up, that you will declare and give my name glory, that you will fall on your knees and pray. God is calling for his remnants to show up. You know, and I'm going to give you a few scriptures because I want to give you scriptures. I don't want to say I just got on here and talk. People are like, hey, he didn't get word. But Matthew 16, 24, it says, teach us. It's, it literally teaches the Christians a fact of denying ourselves. See, when we learn to deny ourselves, Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their own cross and follow me. Everything that happened to you, every hardship, it ain't happening to you. It's happening for you to be the example of God. God said he would never leave us or forsake us. As a Christian, we must obey God. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, love one another as you love yourself. Why did God say that? He didn't say love those who love you. He said, I don't care what they look like, what they sound like. I don't care what hatred, racism is coming out their mouth. You are commanded to love them. As you love yourself, because he, I have made, he's making it clear. I have loved you as a sinner. I have saved you as a sinner. I have off of my body. I have become the Lamb of God. I have sh my blood was shed while you was a yet sinner, didn't even know me, probably cursing me out and having a ball in sin, but I still died for you. I'm stretching it and I'm stepping on the faith and I'm being bold. Them four officers, I don't care what we think about them. Guess what? God, he sent his son to die for them. God said, guard your heart. The enemy is after your heart. Yes, justice will come. They will serve. They will get what they just deserve in court. They will get it. Look, I'm I'm praying. I want the, the governor and the mayor, the judges, he's common sense. They would get it in court. But most of all, guess what? They would get their judgment from God. Vengeance is not us. It is the Lord's. Let the Lord handle and fight your battles. Because what God would do to them is greater than we can do. And sometimes, believe it or not, God is, his punishment, his judgment is not actually what we think. Because God would turn them and to the, their hearts, if they receive Jesus Christ as salvation, he would use them to go get a multitude of people that were just like them. That was rich, that was filled with hate, that was broken in whatever situation. He would cause them to actually go and get the multitudes and gather a harvest and bring it back to God. God said he, want, he would give you beauty for your ashes. I want you to begin to look back and appreciate what your ashes are, 
was everything that happened to you. God says, I want every pain that you have experienced because I'm going to give you beauty and revelation and you're going to see it is actually the very thing that you're anointed to handle. We look for the good things, the beautiful things to be our anointing. No, God said, he said, no, oh, anointing, guess what? It's, it's going to cost. I mean, look at Jesus. He came as the son of God. He came as our savior. He came as a deliverer. Guess what? They still hung him. They still crucified him. Look, look, they still pierced him inside. They still with him. But, oh, we thank you to God, the 40 lashes, it was for us. We received a beautiful thing out of his 40 lashes. When someone lashes you, attack you, lie, attack you, take that lash with a pride. And guess what? Take authority and give it to God because he's going to show you, oh, that lash is because I'm, I'm giving you the authority to break whatever attack you. To not just break, but now set them free. Because if you really look, Jesus died for some people that whipped him. If they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, even the soldiers sat there when a, when a clouds parked open, thunder, and the ground started shaking, he said, surely that is the Son of God. He repented. He got right with God because he, he knew at this moment we killed, we crucified him. The earth shaked. It rumbled. It, the heaven opened up. And something happened that never happened on anyone else we have crucified. Our response, you never know when it will cause someone to really stop and say they really know God and I want to know their God. I want to talk to them. I need to talk to them. That's why we as Christians can't get mad and frustrated because we don't know who is watching that's going to see the change and then want to come talk to us because they want to say, how did you do it? Even in secrecy, can you pray with me? You have to learn how to be the, the people of God. But I'm going to close with, um, uh, I believe, like seven things. I, I literally just want to to share y'all. Um, that's why I hate letting my kids hold my tablet. But the things that, why we really must be obedient to God. Look, being obedient to God, literally, in Galatians 6.2. To sum us up, it says we must carry each other burden. But literally, when we're obedient to God, no matter what happens, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it. Somebody else might say they are. To tell the truth, shame the devil. You ever get a job and you're complaining? That means we're not really gracious oh, to God because God gave us a job. But I want you to learn this is a focus. To be obedient at work. I don't care. What the boss asks you to do that you just don't feel like it. I don't care. You say, man, I wish I had another job or better working somewhere else. God is saying, no, that's not what I put you on a job for. Be obedient to me and find out what you want a job for. Because when you be obedient to me and find out what you want a job for, I will give you favor. I will, I will cause the windows of heaven to open up for you. When you're obedient to me in your mind, the enemy cannot penetrate your heart. When you're obedient to me in your heart, what's going to happen to you is literally out of your belly is going to flow living waters. Living waters. These are all things to be the remnant of God. When you're obedient to God with your goals, yes, I have goals that I want to do some things, accomplish things, but I'm now weighing them and say, God, if I do that goal, where would it put me in your plans in the kingdom? And God is like, good, I'm glad you asked. Literally, by now, you know, I used to I used to beat my wife over the head, you know, because I'm from the hood. I just see band of minions. I'm like, hey, this vest, this body. She's like, no, nah, I'm not living in the hood. But I'm like, financial wealth. And, and I start seeing all these houses getting bought up in Philly. And they're like literally 10 houses that I wanted to buy. If I would have had it by now, I'll be, I, look, I have like a, way over $200,000. And God said, stop beating her up about that. <laughs> I, I used to stay away from North Philly because I would get sick in my stomach. And God, like, if you would have had them properties and you would have received $70,000 for each one and 10 of them, would you really still be wanting me, seeking me, thirsting and hungering after me? Would you pay the tenth off of that? Will you actually serve me or will you be traveling the world doing what you want to do, living wherever you wanted to live? Would it have took you off your course with me? Sometimes everything we want is not really what God wants to give us 
because it does something to our heart. So learn to be content with where you're at. Learn to be faithful in your heart with where you're at. Learn to make your goals God goals. But be obedient with your talent. Are you really listening and saying what God is telling you to say? Because I know me, I had to repent. I know I can interpret tongues, but I dare not do it because I'm like, I don't want anyone asking me. I, I, I don't want to do it because sometimes I interpret tongues and I'm like, God, that ain't you. I, I heard it. It ain't. And it, like sometimes I don't even interpret because sometimes it gets scary. You hear things. And God is like, that's me speaking. And God had to make me repent. I had to repent. Not make me. I had to repent to God. And he said, I need you to be, I need you to be faithful with your talents. And that goes along with talents on job. But the one thing we all, sometimes we struggle with, of being obedient with our finance. You know, Maya Angelou, I love her. She said, no one never came, became broke from giving. I said, huh? Because the more you give, the more you receive. The more you open up the windows of heaven, that more might fall down on you, the blessings of God. We have to remember God is calling for the most ultimate thing to be obedience in our body. I like to say the devil, I like I can't get the devil credit. I'm a black man, and I'm on this, I'm closing on this. I'm a black man. My father had diabetes and high blood pressure. I'm like, all right, cool. He didn't go to the doctor until it was too late. I'm like, I don't even want to find out. You know, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm, I'm trying to get a living, earn a life. But I always felt some issues. I couldn't put it together. But I'm just like, yeah, I ain't paying attention to that. But my first stroke, hey, I tell you the truth. I couldn't, couldn't walk and couldn't do a lot. Came out of hospital. You think I listened? You think I took the medications? Nah, I got to work. I got to make a living. I got kids. I got family. I got. I can't leave them broke. I got to leave some. I got to do what I got. I got to pay the bills, electric, cable, and all this. And God, like, you're not being obedient with your body. You're not eating healthy. You're not eating right. You're still eating out. You're still, like, you're eating fried food, greasy food. You're still eating big plates. And it hit me. I was sinning against God. Gluttony is a sin. If we're not going to the gym, well, you can't go now. But if you're not least, I, I got my kids, 15 minutes a day, four times a day, I want you working out, whether push-ups, whether running in place, doing jumping jacks, whether going outside, running for 15 minutes, taking, I thank God my daughter let us get a dog. I think we inherited because she don't want it back. But take the dog for a walk. Get some exercise because your body belongs to God. What good is we to God if we can't carry out ministry because we're sick? Because of our health, because we didn't exercise, eat right. We didn't take care of ourselves. And most importantly, if we did not get sleep, if you're not getting at least, I thought it was crazy. I'm like, who can sleep for eight hours and 12 hours? I don't get that. I get two hours a night, three hours a night, five. I only get five. But then God said, I need you to fall asleep. Your brain is running 24-7. You're fighting a battle in the spirit. And guess what? The enemy is winning and I'm losing because you're too tired. It took, look, I said, I'm closing that. I used to fall asleep driving. And literally, my wife said, she don't need to drive no more. I lost a job driving. I crashed a car one time when I was a teenager and it flipped over. And God said, deprive your health, you deprive your life. Deprive God, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, and you will kill yourself. So I just wanted to close out on that and just remind everyone, you know, we are no longer to say we're a Christian and that's it. You receive salvation. You receive the power of the Holy Spirit. You are now the remnant of God. You are now to be the essence and presence of God, the power, the fulfillment of God, the manifestation of God on this earth. You are by authority to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, heal the blind. You're, you're literally called to go in nurses' homes and hospitals and deliver people from wherever they at when God speaks to you because the power of the Holy Spirit is on you. And I'm closed on that, but I wanted to share this with you before I bring my wife back. If you have not 
been released is speaking in tongues, all you got to do is ask. Just ask. The Holy Spirit freely, God freely gives. The Holy Spirit was given to you. This ask. Father, fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost that I might be able to speak and release spirit. See, the, the enemy attacks you with speaking in tongues because he know you tap into the heavenly realms of the Father. You're speaking in an unknown language to man and you're speaking from the presence of God with power and authority. And he know if he could stop you from releasing tongues, he know he had kind of strangled your power. But God said, if you ask, he would give it, and you, guess what? It will flow out of your livers of water. You don't have, look, you don't have to tarry. Some people say you have to tarry for it. No, not, that's a lie. God said, guess what? Believe it, get in God's face, be sincere, and guess what? You can just start praying in English, and then it's go one, two, three. It will fall on you. It will flow out of you and be released. And watch what happened with you your home, at your job, the market, your work environment, your kids. Look, practice it with your kids. Look, we won't speak in tongues. Look, my kids, they picked up quick. We gonna pray for hours. We ain't getting up to you. And guess what? Before you know, one day, I kids, I shit a robot, and they start going. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, Lord. And they do it more often. Sometimes they give me that, and they speak in tongues. I'm like, what? And I could be about to do something stupid. But I want you to be empowered and filled and be blessed today. I'm going to bring back Pastor Chandra. She's going to close us out in prayer.